finance uh, to order. Um, and at this meeting, um, we are starting about 1.15 uh, on Wednesday, October 25th. And present are Representative Kawasaki, Representative uh, Vice Chair Guerra, Co-Chair Foster, Representative Grin, uh, Representative Guttenberg, Representative Thompson, Representative Wilson, are you online telephonically? I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And can you hear us okay today? Much better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and we have Representative Tilton and Representative Pruitt have joined us as well, and myself, Co-Chair Seaton. So we have a full committee. Representative Ortiz will be joining us um, uh, later in the meeting. So before we start, I remind everybody about their cell phones uh, to mute those. And also, I'd like to um, let everybody know that there's been some problems with the LIOs picking up the uh, conversations. So when you're talking, would you please direct the mic at your uh, mouth and five to six inches away? And so um, that the people in the public um, can uh, hear us, and that goes for the testifiers as well. Uh, would you make sure that you're five, six inches away from the mic and it's pointed directly at you? So if there's a testifier that's moving from side to side, take two of the mics and point them from either direction. That would be helpful. Uh, today, uh, we're going to have presentations from the Department of uh, Natural Resources on the production forecast and the methodology used, and that will be followed by a presentation from the Department of Revenue on the newly re released revenue forecast. At this time, I'd like to uh, ask the Department of Natural Resources, Paul Decker and Ed King, to come forward, place yourselves on the record, and uh, proceed with your testimony and presentation when you are uh, ready. Uh, for the record, my name is Paul Decker. I'm a geologist and resource evaluation manager at the Division of Oil and Gas. Hi, and for the record, Ed King, Special Assistant to Commissioner of Natural Resources. And uh, since we have two male voices, if you are answering a question, would you just say your name uh, for the record? Uh, you don't have to do the full introduction, uh, but your name would be helpful. Great. So who's going to proceed? <laughs> Sorry, if the committee is ready, we'll go ahead and get started. So today we're, we're before the committee uh, at the request of the committee for an update uh, to the revenue forecast. Uh, the Department of Revenue will be addressing the revenue forecast, but as a foundational piece of that forecast, uh, the production forecast that DNR puts together builds into that, to that revenue model. So the Department of Natural Resources will, is here today to um, talk to you all about the update to our production forecast. So we'll start with some really good news. Now that the fiscal year six, 17 is officially over since I talked to you last, so we can officially say that we've seen a second year of increased production. That number, that fiscal year 17 number isn't quite official yet, but it's somewhere in that ballpark of, four, of 524,000 barrels up um, about 9,000 barrels from a year, the year previous. And as we look forward, our, our forecast looking at the current fiscal year that we're in, fiscal year 18, it looks like we're on track to have a third consecutive year of production increases. And, and before we proceed, I wanted to recognize that Representative uh, Solomon Leonard has joined us. Appreciate that. Go ahead. So I'll take just a moment to orient you to the slide here. And there's, there's kind of a lot going on. Uh, first, the, the solid line that you're seeing here is the actual production for fiscal year 16, I'm sorry, 17, the year that ended in June. Um, the dashed line is our forecast with seasonality included of what's going to happen this fiscal year that we're now four months into. And the four kind of di diamond uh, dots, if you will, the red dots that you see there are the, the preliminary actual for or production numbers that we've seen so far this year. So you see in July, we, the actual production was a little bit below our forecast. In August, it came in a little bit high. And the preliminary numbers for September and October look like it's tracking our forecast relatively well. Um, we're also slightly above where we were at this point last year. So right now, year to date, we've seen about 488, a little bit more, 1,000 barrels per day. Um, 
compared, that's about five, um, 4,000 barrels above where we were at this point last year. So we're, we're on track to see yet another increase in production so far. As long as everything continues to progress the way that we think it will, um, obviously an unplanned downtime or anything like that um, could, could make those numbers change. But right now, that's what it looks like. So our forecast is actually for about 533,000 barrels in this fiscal year, up about, um, that number is a little bit wrong, but about uh, 9,000 barrels again uh, year over year. So I was expecting a question of where is that new oil coming from, so I'll just go ahead and answer that question myself. The, uh, <laughs> the, right. So this slide is, is showing the, the production changes, the year-over-year -year increases in production. So this is just, you know, if things were flat, just comparing one year to the other, wh how much production has changed. And I've broken it out here um, at the unit level. So looking at the fiscal year 16 increase over fiscal year 15, we can see Colville River accounted for something around seven or 8,000 barrels of additional production above their previous year rate. Most of that can be attributed to CD5. Um, and we see Prudhoe Bay also increase their rate year over year. Um, and we believe that that increase is mostly contributing from just operational efficiencies. So it's just really good management there by the operator in, in Prudhoe Bay in that unit. We also see a slight increase in the Kayachuk. That's mainly from new con wells continuing to be drilled. Um, and then just going over to the left side, the left half of the slide here, looking at the last fiscal year over the year previous, uh, we see a similar story. Again, um, as CD5 continues to be drilled out, we're st still seeing increases in production at, at Colvo River. Prudhoe Bay continues to see improved efficiencies. Um, and everything else is relatively flat. Uh, I would point out that, that Kalis at Agurek is, is seeing um, some really good results from some fracture stimulations, which is, which is also bringing really good news. So overall, really good news for Alaska, right? We're seeing um, production increasing, and uh, we would like to thank the operators for that work that they're doing. But what's really impressive is if you don't compare just year over year what's happened, but also account for the fact that typically oil production will decline, right, year over year. So just as, res as reservoir energy is being depleted while the um, oil is being produced, it becomes more and more difficult to produce oil. It's natural for us to see a decline. Historically, before the last two years, it's been right around 5% per year. So if that 5% per year decline would have continued, we can see what the actual increase in production that was being contributed for um, by the producers. And, and you can see here that it's actually a lot more impressive than it first looks. And it's also pretty much ubiquitous, ubiquitous right? Across the entire North Slope, we're seeing this for various reasons. The operators are able to do um, more, get more and more production out of, out of their units. So looking on the left there, Prudhoe Bay, this, this, this last year, fiscal year 17, versus uh, what we should have expected to see versus their trend, more than 27,000 barrels of, of production per day and increased rate, which is very, very impressive. I mean, that's basically bringing a Nikayachuk field si size field online, which, you know, it's really good news. Um, again, Corville River, uh, mostly attributable to the additions at CD5. Kaparik, mostly attributable to um, the increases at drill site 2S and some operational efficiency. Uh, and then you have the three units on the right, which I would, I would, don't have the data to really support this assertion, but I would just point out that Hillcorp has recently taken over these three units, and that is kind of their business model of getting more production out of mature fields. So across the entire North Slope, for various reasons, we're seeing operator efficiencies and really good work by, by our producer partners, um, and uh, it's, it's just very good news. Sure. Uh, question, Representative Guttenberg. Thank you. So when looking at uh, Prudhoe Bay, which is an old mature field, certainly a giant, um, do you have any idea how much of that is um, operational efficiencies, how much of it is um, rework, and how much of it are, are new wells or new, new finds within the, the, um, uh, uh, the, the field or their management area? Yeah. Uh, represent Representative Guttenberg through the chair. Uh, so what we have been seeing in, in your petroleum news and in other news outlets is a very 
real recognition that they're running only one or two rigs anymore, right? So the versus the five rigs that they were running in previous years, obviously the expectation would be that this isn't coming from new well drilling. This is coming from something else. And really what it is is just very effective base rate management and deferral management where they're able to do more with what they have. In this low cost environment, they're finding more ways of getting more efficiencies and finding new ways of, of getting more out of that mature field. And I, I would also point out, and I, I think um, my deputy commissioner would, would like to make this point as well, that um, you know we are at a point now in this field where the easy oil is kind of gone. And we're now producing in that field uh, at something like 10% of its peak rate or something along those lines, or maybe 20% of its peak rate. It, the field has declined a lot. It's, it is a mature field. So now that we are at a point where, where the field isn't producing as much, it makes it a little bit easier to manage the decline rate, right? You don't need as much um, improvement to mitigate a smaller decline. Okay, well, Mr. Trafalgar. Uh, so um, the number of uh, drill rigs is, is what it is. Um, I know the facilities are very old and they're constantly re being um, reconfigured um, to be more efficient. And between that and fracking, you know, fracking techniques and, and um, understanding the, the, the reservoir better. Is it all of those things? Is it, can you have a discussion about what that is or their, their work plans or do we can see what's going on in the future, whether they're uh, whether their intent is to accelerate that or go slow or the expectation of, of production. Representative Guttenberg, through the chair, I, I, I don't want to deflect the question, but I think that that's a really good question to ask the operator. Okay. And, and I would say, I, I will say as much as I can that it is certainly the case that what we're seeing is facility optimization and resource management optimization that is very, very impressive for what the field is. They're doing a really good job with what they have, and I guess I would defer to the operator to answer the questions further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Go ahead and proceed. So this next slide is, is kind of a, an illustrative um, pre, uh, representation of our actual forecast for the next 10 years. And I've, I've laid on here a couple of things. So you're, you're looking at the last two years of production increases in the solid lines and dots on the left, um, and you're seeing a representation of our forecast, our mean forecast in the dashed line to the right, um, and then the dotted lines above and below are kind of the range of potential outcomes that we see as, as reasonable to expect. Um, and then at the bottom, you can see in the, the, the triangles um, what our forecast was last year. And so obviously our forecast this year is much higher than it was last year. And uh, the dotted lines, is that the P80, the probability 80, or, or what is that range, uh, the high and low? Yeah, so it is an 80% confidence range, so 10% chance of it being higher than the high and 10% chance of it being lower than the low. Okay, and so everybody understands what that, how that dotted lines are, are meaning about the probability. Okay, thank you. And we've been joined with by Representative Tar. Welcome. So again, I was expecting the question, why is your forecast changed? So uh, um, I'll answer that question myself as well. Um, when we did our forecast last year, the the two thousand and and you know, a, more than a year ago now when we did the forecast for the, the previous fiscal year, we were in an environment where we didn't have